So talk us through the process. You've, you've got those goals. What would be the next step of this big process of coming up with an investing decision support system? Well, first, let's just talk high level objective first, uh, just get that out of the way is, is that, you know, if you're doing an investment plan or a lifetime plan or something, you, you want to set a, a, a mission of, of what your growth is going to be and in, in, you know, in kind of what environment, why are you going to do it? So, you know, the retirement risks, give it away, whatever it might be. And, and then you've got to get down to your goals and objectives, which basically says, right, reward um, objective and risk objective, which we've just spoken about. Then you go, okay, now if your reward objective is 20% growth per annum, then that, that starts to that's, that starts steering you in places as to where you're going to try and achieve that. So you know, if you're going to try and get you know, 20, 30% annualized growth, then you're going to have to go to leverage markets. You're going to be, have to be highly active. It has an effect on your lifestyle, all that sort of thing. So, so you have to get all that into perspective as to you know, have, be realistic about your time, the lifestyle you want to lead. Uh, what your risk profile is in terms of how much drawdown and how much pain you can actually endure, all that sort of thing. Now, most people don't know that um, when they, if they're going to start out on the journey of developing a system. So you, you need to know, you know a little bit about the, who you are. And the more you know about who you are and what you're trying to achieve, um, and also what's realistic in the environment in which you're trying to execute it, you know, the, the better you are going to be at a system developer. Okay, so that out of the way, you then go to once you set your goals and objectives, which is aligned to your mission, you go, well, how am I going to do this? And now you go, okay, you can go to property, you can go to bonds, you can go to whatever, depending on what your, your goals are, you can go to crypto, and, and then you get to the how and you pick, right, this is the environment in which this is realistically possible and probable, and then you start your research. So with with the journey that I've gone in, I've gone through, um, you know, I looked at property, I looked at a bunch of other things. I looked at some uh, some exotics, had some exotic interests at the time and, and decided, no, the stock market was it. In fact, it probably decided for me, it just, I just, it felt good. It, you know, I just, I did it and it, and it resonated and I, and I woke up in the morning and the other areas I looked at kind of dissipated and fell by the wayside. And it, this is the one that resonated. So this is the path I went down. And you know, for a whole bunch of reasons, it is good. It's highly liquid. It's, it's highly accessible. It's highly flexible. It has all those things about it. And relative to other environments, its entry cost is, is much, much lower mm -hmm. than other environments. And you can choose to have leverage or not. Property, it's kind of all leverage. Yeah. All, all, all those reasons led me to where I am. So then you go, okay, now we're trying to achieve this objective. So what's our growth objective? What is our protection our risk objective? And then you just start looking for concepts. So, so what concepts um, do I, can I use to start? Um, you know, and then it was fundamentals initially. I was trying to build a fundamental system and, and it was getting data from statics department of the ASX and pulling out you know, um, P ratios and, 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 and earnings growth and dividend growth and, and chairman statements. And you know, so English was going, it was highly English orientated as we spoke about. And there was also numbers. But my days in the corporate world you know, got me to realize that the, it's a very subjective environment as to what earnings is in any given year and what it is over a period of time because you know people um large companies can decide you know what what they bring into this financial year and what they put into next financial year and you know, empty boxes arrive with invoices you know, put pulled forward one date from first of july to 30th of june or pushed out by one day and that kind of you know then i realized that gee, this wasn't such an objective environment um, and so I was looking for what are we trying to achieve? Objectivity and consistency. What is the most objective thing that that will give that I can use as an input mechanism uh, that I could trust and uh, that um, that is kind of voted by you know a large number of people rather than a board or a chief executive or a chief financial officer, just one or two or three people. And of course, that's where we spoke about in previous weeks is we end up with price action. You know, price action is just the most objective thing you're going to find that whether you like it or not, it's objective, correct, two decimal places for anything you're looking at, whether it's an index or a stock. And it has all of the possible things that could affect the price to go up or down thrown into it. So it's a voting machine. You know, you don't, you don't have a, and it's a large voting machine. So, so you end up going to price action and, and then you start coming up with concepts to, to try and, uh, and look at historically what price action, uh, what kind of um, patterns and, and indicators and you know, derivatives of price action can, can help you form a, a decision support system whereby the, um, you're going you're gonna to win 
yeah, uh, uh, most half the time to originally when you first start out, you go, yeah, I want to have 80% winners and you realize that that's, that's impossible. Um, uh, that is possible with, but not with buying stocks It's possible in other environments when you may be writing options and stuff like that, but for buying stocks and going long and trend following is, you know, looked at other methods of system, mean reversion and, and stuff like that, and ended up with trend following. And, um, and I still believe today, you know, from when I started out in 1995, trying to develop my first system, uh, is that is that trend following is still undoubtedly the best way to to trade the market. And uh, so then you find concepts that, uh, and then you start researching those. Um, and you know, with all the computerized stuff we have around these days, it's it's become easier and easier to do. And what you're looking for is uh, is is a mechanism that uh, that when you buy, you end up having you know, a, a number of profits, i.e. win rate, that um, that compared to when you don't win, i.e. You, you, know, you lose, as to how big or small those profit and losses are relative to how often you win. So it's, it's win rate mm -hmm. and what we call payoff ratio, or what was also called, some people call profit ratio. The payoff ratio seems to be the term that's come out now. The payoff ratio is basically... You know, the average winner divided by the average loser. So if you have if your winners are on average uh, 20 percent and your losers on average 15 percent, uh, sorry, five percent, then you have a, a, a payoff ratio of four to one. So your winners are four times bigger than your losers. Yeah. And you know, if 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 the number of winners that you have turns out to be half the time, then you have a 50 percent win rate. And and then you then you can from there work out you know, what your statistical edge is. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's the beauty of of doing it mechanically, objectively. And consistently, because that's what we're trying to achieve, objectivity and consistency, is, is that it's highly measurable. It's correct to two decimal places. You're not, you're not measuring you know, what I think or what the somebody who writes a newsletter thinks. We're measuring what the market thinks. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So...